In the 1960s, when President Kennedy announced that he planned to put a man on the moon, I'm not sure that anybody knew how, but it was a, a vision which united people, which spurred people to develop the technology and to work together and to achieve a common vision. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. And dealing with paralysis is a similar kind of vision where we don't have all the answers yet. We don't all have all the knowledge yet. But we have to bring them together in the way that they were brought together for the moonshot if we're going to solve a problem this tough. When the device actually becomes something that decreases... Being able to bring all of the, the components together, the scientists, the clinicians, the engineers, is going to really be the cure for paralysis. As we talk about stem cells reaching their potential, their potential is going to come from patients having teams. Any of these groups in isolation can do quite a bit for a patient, but when we really want to take it to the next level and be able to get people back to the things that matter to them, it's going to take teamwork. This is important to me because I see this as really the foundation of modern medicine going forward. Silicon Valley has been a great place to incubate innovation, not only the creation of computers, but biotech. We've always had the best and the brightest ready to move into the new frontiers. So I, I think one of the great challenges that we have is, is really how do we make this happen? This problem is not going to be solved by a single company. We've got to come in with team science, multidisciplinary efforts, and a, a sense of a public-private partnership where we're all working together. I think the rewards here are so high, not only for the patients and their families, but also for the investigators and the companies that will be involved with this. I first became interested in people who'd become paralyzed because of seeing patients with war injuries. There's always been an interesting relationship between war and medicine. And the kind of injuries of war, tragic as they are, often lead to advances in medicine. Currently, we're living through consequences of recent wars, and a lot of people coming back with injuries that they wouldn't have survived before, and therefore much more disabled than they would have been before, with head, spinal injury, amputations, burns, hearing, vision loss. So this is an opportunity, as well as a challenge, to deal with the young men and women who've been in active service on our behalf, who now come back for us to try and use some of the technology we've developed to help them put their lives back together. Problems which have up to now been insoluble. We're starting to apply technology to ourselves in a new way.